Hello again. You may recall in Lesson 34 on the app, or Episode 21 in iTunes, that I showed you the principles behind Camera Obscura and how to make a pinhole camera. In this lesson, I'm going to show you how to make a different kind of pinhole camera that doesn't require the use of film and produces really cool distorted black and white images of high contrast. One of the drawbacks to getting started in traditional black and white photography has always been the need to process the film, which can be a bit challenging and time consuming. But now there's a photo paper available made by Ilford that produces a positive image and eliminates the need for a film negative. This paper is called Harman Direct Positive Paper and is available at the link provided with this lesson. You'll want to order 4 by 5 inch paper for the pinhole camera we're building. Although you won't have to develop film to get an image, you'll have to develop the paper in a darkroom. All you'll need is paper developer, stop bath, fixer, and trays large enough to process the paper. You'll also need a deep red safe light and a clock or a timer. All of these materials are fairly inexpensive and may be purchased at the included link. The materials needed to make your pinhole camera are a Pringles canister, a small gauge sewing needle, a soda can, black spray paint, electrical or duct tape, scissors, and either a utility knife or an X-Acto knife. What will cause your images to distort is the curve of the canister. Because the photo paper curves along the sides of the canister, the resulting image will be stretched and bowed accordingly. To get started, you'll need to reduce the size of the canister. 6 inches is a good size because it will allow you to orient your 4 by 5 inch paper either horizontally or vertically. Make a mark at 6 inches from the bottom of the can. Here I'm using a rubber band to help me draw a smooth line around the circumference of the tube. Next, cut off the unwanted part of the canister. I'm using an X-Acto knife here, but you could also use a coping saw to get a cleaner cut. Now we need to cut a hole where the pinhole lens will go. Make a mark in the center of the tube by measuring 3 inches from the end. Now draw a rectangle that's around a half inch by a quarter inch across. Carefully cut out the piece. Next, take a soda can you've rinsed out and cut out a piece slightly larger than the hole you just cut in the tube. After you've done that, place the rectangle on a flat surface backed by matte board or foam core and carefully pierce a hole in the center of it, making sure not to push any further than it takes to create a nice tiny little hole. Although a smaller hole requires longer exposure, the image will be sharper the smaller the aperture size is. Before I go any further, I want to paint the inside of the tube black so the light will not be reflected and bounce around inside the tube. I'll paint the lid as well. It's not necessary to paint the outside of the tube unless you care how it looks. The choice is up to you. After the paint has dried, place the aluminum piece over the hole in the tube, making sure that the pinhole is as close to the center of the hole as possible. Now secure the aluminum to the tube using tape, making sure that you don't cover the pinhole and taping it securely. It's extremely important that your camera has no light leaks. The most common area for light leakage is the opening where you'll insert the photo paper. To assure that you'll have a light tight seal, try using a piece of black fabric cut to a size that will allow you to seal up the opening after you put on the lid. Now it's time to load the paper. Take your camera and your paper into a totally dark room such as a closet or your basement. Always check the room for light leaks before opening your box of paper by allowing a minute or so to let your eyes adjust to the darkness and looking for any light leaks. If you see any, seal them off with a towel or whatever you can find. Once you're sure that the room is light tight, you can go ahead and switch on your safe light. You only need enough light to see what you're doing, so position the light as far away from the paper as possible and never point it directly toward the paper. Now open the box of photo paper. Inside you'll find that the paper is enclosed in a black plastic bag with one end folded over. Remove one piece of paper and immediately close the bag up again and close the lid of the box. Now feel for the emulsion side of the paper before placing it into the tube. You'll notice that one side of the paper is smoother than the other. The smooth side is the base side and the not so smooth side is the emulsion side where it's coated with photosensitive silver. Hold the paper either horizontally or vertically and insert the paper into the tube, emulsion side out, and smooth side in against the wall of the tube. Make sure that you're putting the paper in the opposite end of where your pinhole is located or you'll risk covering the pinhole. Once the paper is inserted, place the camera on its bottom, center the black fabric over the opening, and push the lid on securely. Now you can either put a piece of electrical tape over the pinhole or simply cover it with your finger before going back out into the light. 
I'm going to choose a subject that has nice formalistic details, so the spike should be a good choice. Before shooting, there are a couple things to consider. One is that you want your camera to be as close to the subject so it will maximize the captured image area, plus increase distortion. Also, you want to use something to keep the camera still during exposure. This particular camera is going to want to roll, so I'm going to use a piece of wood to weigh it down and avoid any movement. Once I've placed the camera on the ground, I'm going to aim the pinhole where I want to capture the image. Once I'm ready to shoot, I remove my finger from the pinhole and start timing the exposure. There are suggested shooting times for various weather conditions on the linked file I've included with this lesson. For this exposure, I'm going to choose 4 minutes because it's slightly overcast out. If you're wondering why the exposure is so long, there are two reasons. The first is that the ISO for this paper is only 3, which is incredibly slow. Also, you have to consider the size of your pinhole, which is probably around f-150 or so. The good news is that you can do some really cool things during such long exposures, such as move around, get yourself in the picture, stuff like that. You're limited only by your imagination. After the four minutes is up, I cover the pinhole with my finger and take my pinhole camera into the darkroom. Here I've got three really small 4x5 developing trays, which take up very little room and use only a little chemistry. In the first tray, I pour in the developer, the second stop bath, and the third the fixer. If you want to learn more about these chemicals and how they work, refer to Lesson 42 on the app or Episode 29 on the podcast. Once I'm ready to develop, I switch on the safe light, remove the photo paper from my camera, and slide it into the developer. I'm simply going through the motions here with a blank piece of paper to illustrate what you'll be doing under safe light conditions. Agitate for one and a half to three minutes until the image looks good and then put it into the stop bath and agitate for 10 seconds. Now fix for around a minute. Keep in mind that these times depend on the brand of chemicals you're using and the concentration. All of these are listed on the PDF I've included. Finally, wash the print in running water for at least a half hour. I suggest using permawash which cuts the wash time down to three minutes. Allow the print to dry and afterwards you may want to flatten it by placing a heavy weight like a book on top of it. Here's the actual shot I took of the bicycle. Note the interesting perspective, detail, and contrast. There are ways to decrease the contrast of this paper by using a process called pre-flashing. This procedure, along with all kinds of other ways you can use this paper, is included on the PDF. What I really like about pinhole photography is the total unpredictable nature of it. When I placed the camera where I did, I had no idea the resulting image would look like this. The worm's eye view is pretty cool, and I like the way the sky looks in the background, framed by the trees. I also like how fat the spokes are on the right side of the wheel, compared to the left side. Here's a second shot I took of the bike, taken from a little farther away, and only at three minutes, to make it a little bit lighter. It's amazing how positioning the camera only a foot further could change the total composition of the image. Nearly all of the bike is in the print, plus you can see the pavement and a bit more of the sky. The shorter exposure time allowed for a little more detail in the shadows to show up as well. For as simple as pinhole photography is, one can learn a ton about the photographic process, and its unpredictability will never cease to surprise and delight. I encourage you to give this fun, easy project a try sometime when you found yourself wanting something more than just digital photography in your repertoire. I can promise you that you won't be disappointed. Well, that's about it for this lesson. Until next time, goodbye.